this is a, a, a great image of a respectable, classy, beautiful woman. For you to point out this well-dressed sister here to make me feel some type of way about myself becomes a problem. Let, let me let me get you. Let me get you. Dance, girl. Oh, yeah, girl. Reason I have never said I do is because I don't. I've, I've been married, um, and I, I I couldn't sign up for bad sex. Let's drive. Hey, girl. Dance, girl. So if we enter a relationship with anything that's about me, 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 then I don't believe that we're ready. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to part two of Single on a Saturday Night. I am Daydon Tolbert. This is Shelly Williams, and uh, as you can see, if you tuned in last week, this was a very heated debate on why so many black women find themselves to be single. This week, we're going to split, uh, switch it up a little bit and talk about the role that sex plays in why so many women find themselves to be single. But I believe uh, we had a young woman in the back who wanted to uh, make a comment about our previous segment. Hello, everyone. I am Tamara Wiggins, and at this point, I don't even know where to begin um, from the clothes. <laughs> to us as black women having these dire straight attitudes and to use your word piggyback, for you to point out this well-dressed sister here to make me feel some type of way about myself becomes a problem within us as black women. We don't understand what it is that you want when you say you want something. Chris Rock said it best. When you meet someone, you meet that representative. It might be five years before you meet the true individual. And then where would you find yourself? Back at single on a Saturday night. Pastor said it best. I have been that woman for a man to find out I'm not the one for him. Because what I, what I found out was I was in a relationship being submissive and doing what needed to be done. And here, I wasn't for him. But he was feeding me what needed to be said to make me feel that way for him. Okay, you can't sit here and say that we are angry and we're independent. Independent is, by definition of, 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 the, de of the dictionary, we all know what independent is. Yes, we are independent women because we have to take care of ourselves because we don't have a husband. Am I upset for being single right now? No. Should you make me feel some type of way because I am single? No. Okay, thank right you. Not, not to cut you off. Just, just actually, <laughs> thank you, though. Thank you for your comments, though. I appreciate it. Not to cut you off, but we are short on time. We're trying to just keep things to a, a, a minimum, though. Uh, if I could just respond, please don't take offense. Me pointing her out had nothing to do with you. And you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, showing that she was actually exactly what most black men would look for physically. So if you took offense to that, you know, I can't, I don't know what no, to, no, I can't. Now, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. See, I'm going to say this. Let me, let me get you. Let me get you. I've known her. I've known. Wait, wait, wait. That's what I said. Let me. I got you. I got you. I've known. I know I'm living for a lot, a lot of the years. I will never look like her. I, no matter how. I, my hair will never grow like that. So there's no way I'm going to ever look like. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. There's no way I'm going to ever look like her. I love her. I will walk down the street and feel like I'm just as beautiful as she is. But I can never look like her, ever. My hair will never be that long. I love you, you're gorgeous, but I can never look like her. And yes, when I think about the typical man, yeah, in our minds, me as a bigger woman, yeah, now you just put me on the thing, oh, I got to be skinny to uh, get a man. I got to have long hair. I had to buy my hair to have that hair. You know what I'm saying? So, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. No, to understand, no, sweat, Danielle. No, to understand, I understand Excuse me, excuse me. I understand the point. No, excuse me. I have the floor. Let me take this moment, please. You understand the, the stip like she just said, the way you presented that, and no sister, no disrespect to you, because guess what? I can wear that suit. I can wear my cleave out. I can wear dress, I, whatever I decide for that moment in time. I wear a uniform to work every day. So no, I don't have business attire every day. And like Michelle was saying, do I have to look like that to be small? That's you have to be mindful of what you say and how you present let it. Let me, let me, thank you. Thank, thank you for way. your comment. You, thank you for your comment. And let me clarify, and then we're going to move on to tonight's topic, because I think that people are misconstruing what was said. 
they're taking it personally. When it, I'm not saying, obviously, Shelly, you're not going to look like her. You're definitely not going to look like her. What we're trying to say as black men is from a respectability factor, from the respectability aspect, black men are looking for respectable women. We're not looking for women with a whole bunch of excessive amounts of cleavage out looking like they should be standing on a corner somewhere. So when I used her for an example, I was basically just showing a good example of what a respectable woman looks like in today's society. And this, my man, actually go ahead, briefly, what? please. Just to interject, and, and, and I agree with what the sister was saying, that uh, sometimes we paint with the broad strokes of the brush, uh, and sometimes things come off wrong. And I don't think he meant anything personally. Just to push back on you a little bit, though, I think it comes to the individual, because not everybody wants a size three. Not everybody wants a size 13. Not everybody wants six foot. Not everybody wants five foot. I think it really comes down to the individual and what we want. And I think that that speaks to, and maybe this is a good segue, into, into this segment's topic of sex because many times we allow society to dictate what we should want and what, would, and, and, and what we should accept when the reality is sometimes we miss the right person because it's not packaged the way that we expect it. See, I think 20 sec wait, 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 wait. Just, just a quick 20 second testimony. I am the only non-African American that my wife ever dated in her entire life. Now, had she said, well, no, that's not my kind, I shouldn't be with him, she would have missed, if I can pat myself on the back, the best thing next to Jesus that ever happened to her. So, 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 so we have to, so we have to understand that we, let's not miss the content because of the package. And I agree with that. That's, and then we're gonna, this is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna wrap it up and, and move on to our next segment. I, let me just salute you again. I think people are misconstruing. Like I said, it has nothing to do with the physical package. My point was solely based on the respectability piece of it, which I think a lot, evidently, the young woman in the back totally missed that point. But de definitely, it's not a size. You can be a size 15 and still be a respectable woman. You can, you know. But please, go ahead. Um, I, I completely understood where you were going with it. But the key to communication in all forms of communication is not what we intended, but how it was received. Um, I, that's probably the one thing I learned in college uh, from a class, but anyway. <laughs> uh, no, but I do understand. I, I totally got where you were going with when you say respectability and you pointed her out and, and not, you know, I... We, somebody we, got no, no, <laughs> we, we obviously, all of us in the room, no, no, no one person in this room looks alike or is, is physically the same or anything like that. And I, I didn't take offense to any of it. I think everyone in here is beautiful. Um, but, but, and... But when I, in, in speaking to, okay, I told you I spoke to a whole bunch of guys getting research, right? But in speaking to men, I do understand where you were coming from when you say the respectability factor. So as an artist, you know, you have to have an image. And there was a, a phase where I was like trying to fit, you know, find myself as, as far as my image. And I would try to, I wore more makeup and I, I wore certain lip colors, just being creative, just like being a girl, and being a creative person. And my dad had to pull me aside and say, you know, you have a, you know, this looks good on you and that's hot, but you send in a certain message. And so the package does send a message. Um, and so if I do wear super tight clothes and I don't have much boobs, I'm not afraid to say that on camera, but I tried to wear my boobs out and you know, it was send a certain message. Um, and that's fine if that's what you feel good about, but how, again, the key to communication is not what you intend, but how it's received. Uh, specifically, my dad was like, red lipstick don't work for you, girl. It, it just looks a certain way. I'm not saying it doesn't work for other women, but me personally, it sent a certain message. And so I get it. And that could send a certain message of sex, or she's easy, or she is respectable, or she isn't, based on the package. And so I get where you were going with that. And I I'm hope. Glad, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you got it. And, I, and I'm glad that uh, my point was, was received well by many. And, as well as my man. And if I could use Shelly as an example, I don't have to use this young woman. Shelly is a great example of a respectable woman, classy woman who black men would be looking for. It's not about your size, it's about how you wear it in your size. But, which I think is a great segue into our next segment. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll come back talking about the role that sex plays in relationships. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Michael Heath, Senior Pastor of Living Waters Ministries in Collingdale, Pennsylvania, with your one minute of inspiration on urban expressions. Uh, all of us struggle with mistakes and things that we have done in our past. I like to say every one of us has a past. What? Mine might not be yours and yours might not be mine, but we've all done some things that if we're honest, we wish we could undo. 
but none of us have a time machine, so we're not able to go back in time. But the awesome thing is that just because I've made some mistakes and just because I've done some things doesn't mean that God stops loving me. It doesn't mean that I lose my usefulness uh, for what God can do. So I want you to know that it doesn't matter what you've done, no matter how bad you might feel. Uh, the Bible says that if we would just repent and tell God that we're sorry, that God would bring us back into relationship with him and God will be able to use us. And in fact, oftentimes it is what we've gone through that enable God to use us better so we can help somebody else to not make many of the same mistakes that we have made. So won't you come out to Living Waters, join us, gather with a group of people, not that don't have a past, but that in spite of their past are allowing God to use them and take them to the next level. Living Waters meets every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. We share the main sanctuary of the Collingdale First Church of the Nazarene, 212 McDade Boulevard, Collingdale, Pennsylvania. Check us out online at www.livingwaterspa.org. Come to Living Waters and let the wave overtake you. Hi, um, I just wanted to add a comment to the conversation that was uh, being discussed about sex uh, in relationships. And as a parent, a uh, single parent, I have 14-year-old sons uh, identical twin boys and they're very handsome and you know I try to teach them that just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should I know that they're gonna have a lot of young ladies uh, trying to be their girlfriends trying to get them to have sex and things like that and I'm just encouraging them to take responsibility from themselves for themselves and understand that just because you can something is presented before you doesn't mean you should always take it Hey, this is Livin', hanging out here with Scott Akia Grace, and um, he's just here whipping up some things. This is the master chef, and he cooks for all the single on the Saturday night events. Just wanted to um, ask you, Scott, what would you cook as um, me being a single lady? What would you cook to get, you know, some aphrodisiacs uh, going on, you know, that situation going on for your date? Of course, after you've been dating for a good, good while. Tell them some food. I'm, right now I'm uh, cooking up a shrimp alfredo and uh, that has like the white wine, uh, heavy cream, uh, parmesan cheese, you got a little bit of uh, crushed peppers, black pepper, and uh, you know that would make me and my lady real cuddly at the end of the night. For aphrodisiac I will make mussels because that makes the man like raw, ready to go. So. And it looks so good. And what kind of wine would you serve? Wine, beer, you know? Oh well, I with this dish. Oh, uh, with this dish, like a, uh, I would drink probably like a like a riesling. Oh. Yeah, a riesling with this dish. Like you say, with the uh, with the seafood, mm -hmm. I would uh, prefer like a white wine. Okay. And uh, like say a steak or something, mm -hmm. I would definitely go with a red wine. Okay. All right. So you heard it here. Single on a Saturday night. Make sure y'all tune in on Saturdays and um, hit them up on Facebook. Hit the girl Shelly Shell up on Facebook. Ask your questions. Thanks again, Scott Kia Gray's Single on Saturday night. Can you finish this? Uh, on point. Uh huh. Is this succulent? <laughs> it's very good. Make sure y'all make it down here. Kia Graves. Single on a Saturday night. I, I have to start with thanking everybody who makes it happen. Austin Fine Photography, thank you so much for allowing us to look good and take those shots to make us look good, as well as Philly Native Clothing and our resident pastor, Reverend Michael Heath of Living Waters Ministries, who is located on McDade Boulevard. So if you're looking for a great church home, don't forget Living Waters. He's Googleable, so Google him and check him out. That's Reverend Michael Heath. And also, we have AMA Fine Jewelry, as well as Tracy Lynn Consultant in the back. So Juanita Johnson, they are here. We thank them. And we have a lot, a lot, a lot of people who help us put it together. And if I forget you, I love you, and we will give you a shout out in a bit. But we're going to start with this topic here because you know it's getting heated it's getting hot in here i don't know day don talbert this is the man we like to we love you but sometimes we gotta hate you you know sometimes i love you though we good we good we, we friends we fan we go back it's all good i love it i love the uh debate this is as you can see we're having a very spirited debate here on single on a saturday night Let's talk about it. We ended the last segment talking about uh, many of the reasons why many women find them single. Uh, tonight, we want to get into sex, everyone's favorite topic. Let's talk about the role that sex plays 
uh, in relationships or lack thereof. Uh, Jay, let's start with you. Uh, how do you feel about sex? What role do you feel like sex plays in uh, the, the, the potentially great relationships not making it off the ground? I think that a lot of women don't realize that sex is like your, your sex is your ultimate power um, and we give it away too easily. And I think that everyone in the room and everyone watching, unless you decided to wait until marriage, I do know women of my age who, who've decided to wait, uh, have, have done that, have made that, that misstep. It, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a huge life-changing mistake. It could be a, a life-changing uh, learning experience. But more than anything, as I'll speak for women 25 and, and younger. I know personally that I've made mistakes and given my love away too soon, uh, prematurely. And it can, it can, it can definitely play, play a role in, in, in a person not, um, you're not showing the person how valuable you are because you gave one of your biggest values away without them having to give you anything in return. Absolutely. Uh, just as a man, and then we'll go around the room and kind of talk about what, you know, how other women feel. And I definitely want to hear from my man over here. But, but just from a biblical perspective, the Bible speaks heavily against fornication, and there's a reason for that. It's going to bring about confusion. A lot of times if you, you know, enter into a relationship with a man, you give away sex, you, you leave it feeling a lot worse than you would have had you not opened that door. So uh, definitely, uh, Shelly, what, what are your thoughts on that? We'll pass it down the line. Just like uh, Jade, of course, we all make mistakes. I mean, I'm, you can't get this far. Actually, when Jade was speaking, I mean, I've known you since you were like 12 years old. Instantly. Oh, my mom's here. No, no, instantly. I'm, I'm 25. I said, but I still, you've been, so you, you don't think about it in that way when you talk about, when you think about Jade and sex, it's like, wow, well, it, it becomes bigger. I know, but we are talking about sex. What do you, okay, we're, gonna, we're talking about, I don't know, what it, you can't call it anything but sex. I mean, sorry, Jade, but it's sex. We, I apologize, okay, I don't know what else to call it, whoopee. Anyway, um, when you think about sex, I think about, when you think about somebody young, I'm like, oh my God, no, don't ever tell me that, Jade. I didn't, I didn't really want to say that, you know, when you think about, I don't want to think about it, but I know, me personally, my goal in life is to not have sex before I got married. However, I have made mistakes, not an angel, but I, of course, biblically, we know we're not supposed to have sex before we're, we get married, but we are faced with this temptation all the time. So, and what the conversation is, I'm going to come to you. I want to know how. How do you actually maintain your, your celibacy without, you know, so you can date? I mean, we really need that. We, we don't want to. We, there's some of us who do not want to have sex. We fall into it somehow. I guess you can't fall into it. It happens. <laughs> it happens. But we need to figure out how, how you really can really be in a relationship without Without, how? How does it happen? How can you do it? How can you go in a, a two-year or one-year relationship, head into marriage, but not have sex for at least two years? How do you do that and still get married? Michael, he, Reverend. Oh, you asked him. Okay. Well, I think, uh, again, th there's, there's many levels to the issue, and, and I think what Jade said is absolutely correct, that many times both males and females uh, engage in sex too quickly. Uh, and what happens is, and, and we all know, and we're all adults, and since this air is in the middle of the night, adults should be the only ones watching it, uh, we all know that sex always and every time changes a relationship. Uh, and, and, and the Bible calls it soul ties. Uh, there becomes a connection where the spirits connect. That's why it's saved for marriage, because the two become one flesh, and you connect with that person. Um, and I have a process that I call levels of intimacy where physical intimacy is the last and should be kept for marriage. There should be mental intimacy and emotional intimacy. Uh, th there should be intimacy on every level because the problem is once you have sex, that oftentimes becomes the focal point of the relationship. And then dating digresses to going out to the movies, going home, having sex, going out to dinner, going home and having sex. And there's not that wooing process, uh, as the old folks used to call it. There's not that dating process that takes place. It becomes the focus. And, and so it, and fr from a male perspective, because I wasn't always saved and I wasn't always married, uh, there, that old saying of, you know, why buy the cow if you're getting the milk for free? Uh, and there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that. Um, men like uh, by nature, men are hunters by nature, and men like the pursuit. Um, and again, again, talking about why certain people are single, as a guy, when I was single, if a girl slept with me on the second, third date even, 
I'm saying to myself, I'm not the only person that you're doing that with. So then my mindset is, are you really the quality, you know, as you were saying, not physicality, but spiritually wise, the quality of woman that you want to ultimately marry and get in a relationship with? Let, let me piggyback off that just real quick from a male perspective, and then we'll send it down the line that way. Just as, like he said, I was not always saved, I was not always married, and I would meet women who made it clear that they were having, they were single, but not celibate. And that's, I think we can all agree, that's most people, not just black women, but most people are single and not celibate. So as we as men looking for wives, future mothers of our children, respectable women, if you make it clear that you're dressing in a way that says, okay, I would be a freak, I would do X, Y, and Z for you, you're not going to be my wife. I may still have sex with you, but as far as taking you seriously, it's not going to go that, uh, that direction. My man, let's hear what you have to say from a male perspective on that. Just Frank. Just Frank, my man. Well, I agree with the with Passer here. If you get in the milk, no, nah, I'm messing. Um, seriously though, um, that that's true though. Like uh, once you know, we we as men, we we kind of enjoy that chase, but um, it kind of as soon as the woman does give it up, I, I hate to give it's up. A it's a rap. It's a rap city. You know, it, it, and it, it's hard to say, but it, it's true. Pass it you know? down to uh, let's hear what Miss K has to say on set. Two in the back. Close your ears. Our college students that's just doing some research. I would like to say this as honestly as I can. I know my woman's worth. I do. I will always say honestly to you and everybody else that knows me. Yes, I enjoy sex when I was having sex. But Chemically, I still need that release three times a day. Okay, on that note, Miss K, real I, quick, I, on, I, not I, to cut you off, Miss K, just because we are short on time, I'm getting this signal. We're going to get I, ready. I, I have to say this, though. It is not with another person. So you could read into that, but it's good for the skin, it's good for the body. I have a big life. It's like exercising, and they sell them wherever you need to buy them. And it's a personal okay. thing. All right. All right. Let, let's do this. Miss K, thank you, Miss K, for that. And this is what I want to do. We're going to get ready to wrap up this segment. When we come back, we're going to talk about how soon is too soon. There's a very popular book out there by, uh, by best-selling author, author Steve Harvey that encourages women to wait 90 days to have sex. So as a black man and many other men I know uh, out here find that to be absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous, we're going to talk about from the women and from our panel what, how soon actually is too soon to give it up. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. You're watching Single on a Saturday Night. We'll be right back. Special thanks to Q's Hair Boutique, located at 5815 North Broad Street, Philadelphia, PA. Q's Hair Boutique is a full-service salon providing the star treatment for any occasion. Please, don't look any further for your next hair appointment. Call Q's Hair Boutique. That's 215-668-9800. In true celebrity fashion, Austin Photography snapped beautiful candidates of all the single on a Saturday night group. Austin Fine Photography is located at 4221 Main Street. If you would like to feel like a star, please call Austin Fine Photography at 267-297-7895. We just heard some hot and steamy uh, information from uh, Miss K here, um, great information, but I have to definitely still thank Austin Fine Photography as well as Artists International, and there's actually someone, we're going to get her name, there's actually someone who actually sells the toys that you speak of, so we'll get her name, So, because it's not, it's not taboo, people do it. It's just it's a matter of keeping it real. You, you kept it so real that you probably shocked everybody, but you kept it real. But we're going to get into more of this conversation. Okay. <laughs> Like I said, you're watching Single on a Saturday night, and let's, let's be real about it. On Saturday nights across the country, there is a lot of sex going on. So what we want to do is we want to figure out, I mean, because let's be real, everyone's not the pastor, everyone doesn't live a saved or holy lifestyle, they may engage in sex. So if you're going to do it, if that's something you're into, let's talk about how soon is too soon to go ahead and give it up. Uh, two young women over here on the panel, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think that we keep making these general statements and comments and it's everybody has a, is an individual situation. At 45, for me, with the mistakes I've made in the past and relationships that I've been in, 
I've decided that I'm going to wait. I'm not necessarily looking to be married. I would like to have a life partner. So until I find that partner, I'm not having sex. But that's not how I felt when I was 25. So I can't sit here and say, oh, six months, five months, two days. I don't think you can make a general, uh, put a time frame on it. It's an individual choice. And you know, if I'm dating someone that's not where I am spiritually, at some point, you know, he might start out saying he's okay with it, but he's not. And that's the problem. We're not dealing with people that are in the same mindset as we have. You know, you're not on the same page. Hey, thank you for that. Let's pass it on down the line. Um, I can agree with her when I say that, when she said that because, you know, five years from now, I might have said, you know, 90 days. Like you said, Steve Harvey, um, he says 90 days. I might have agreed with that to an extent. I probably wouldn't have waited that long six years ago. But now I am saved and I am you know, I've decided to wait until marriage. Um, so I don't think, as far as a time frame, you, you should know yourself, you should know your partner. And personally, I think everybody should wait till marriage, but I know that's like unrealistic, because you said everybody's not living a safe lifestyle. But um, I do think the idea is to wait for marriage. Absolutely, and if I can just kind of touch on that for a second from a biblical perspective, the Bible says disaster pursues sin, or those who engage in sin. And one of the things you have to realize is that you, there is no easy way around it. People like Steve Harvey are, are giving women false hopes as to uh, a, what would be a good barometer of, of whether or not you're dealing with a good man as to how long he waits for sex. There is no, I've personally strung women along for sex for more than 90 days, as have many of my friends. So I think we need to be honest and start telling women that you just need to keep your legs closed. Stop having sex to avoid the deadbeat dads. The uh, HIV, HIV is the number one killer among African-American women between the ages of eight to in, 18 and 25. Uh, there have been more abortions in the, among single black women than any other race in the world, and that is because there's a lot of sex going on out here. And as far as black men, everybody will tell you, we, a lot of people say real quick that black men don't want to wait for sex. I always tell people, we have absolutely no problem waiting for sex. We only have a problem waiting for sex with women we only want to have sex with. So you guys, I'm gonna let that marinate a little bit as we wrap up uh, this segment. Actually, we're gonna go to one more comment, then we'll wrap it up. Okay, I just wanted to say that um, I think the right way to go about it is if a guy meets a woman or a woman meets a guy, I think they should go out on their dates with people. I think that it should be a group thing. Like, um, you bring your buddy and he bring his buddy. That way you know that you're not gonna go nowhere after you're done your day. I think that y'all should be friends first and then get to know each other, get to know each other's personalities, become friends first. And then if you fall in love, you fall in love. Then you get married, then have sex. Excellent. I think that it should be always friends first. I don't think it should be, I meet you, I'm gonna take you out one-on-one -on -one, and we're gonna get to know each other. I know you wanna get to know each other, but sometimes it's that temptation, you can't help it, you want it because you haven't done it in so long. Th thank so, you so much, real quick, that's an excellent point. Let's go to my man over here. Yeah, um, it ain't no set time, but you should wait because you need to fill out the other qualifications before you have sex. Because after you have sex, it's all less. Like a person might have good sex, but you think you like them, but you really don't. You just like them because they got good sex. That's actually an excellent point. I know we had a uh, one more comment from uh, uh, Lady M. Um, I just need to say to everyone, first of all, you have to love yourself, love God, and then place your heart with God, and he'll give you the person that deserves it. That's how I feel. Absolutely, absolutely. And but just to kind of piggyback on that, these black men, I have a buddy who uh, married a single mother of, of three kids, and I asked him straight up, I said, why did you uh, marry her? He said, because she loved God. She was on fire for God. She wasn't out here having sex. She wasn't out here with the breast out, the booty out. She was a respectable woman, and he married her. So I just want to tell all the single moms out there, anyone who may be disenfranchised with the idea of marriage and love, it's out here for you, but you just have to respect yourself and love God. And on the contrary, just to say something. Absolutely. On the contrary to all that, you know, I thought we was talking about sex. It seems like God keeps coming into the picture, and that's fine, because I'm a believer. But at the end of the day, you know, it's that physical attraction. Like, I fall in love every time I catch the train. So, women that catch the blue line, you better beware. You know what? I'm not, but, I, I'm a, I walked past just Frank, and, and he was like, wait, are you Amber? And I met you the other day. I'm like, no, we ain't never met. No, but on, on, 
you know, on that <laughs> same note. Like, I believe it. He gave me them eyes, y'all. And I said, whoo, let me look straight. Let's do this. I got to jump in, guys. We're out of time on uh, this episode. We're actually going to take a quick break and come back with a health segment. Because one of the things people need to understand is health is so important and is a, a huge... Uh, a huge point that many people in the black community struggle with. So you're watching Single on a Saturday Night. We'll be right back. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Michael He's Senior Pastor of Living Waters Ministries in Collingdale, Pennsylvania, with your one minute of inspiration on urban expressions. Uh, all of us struggle with mistakes and things that we have done in our past. I like to say every one of us has a past. Well, mine might not be yours and yours might not be mine, but we've all done some things that if we're honest, we wish we could undo. But none of us have a time machine, so we're not able to go back in time. But the awesome thing is that just because I've made some mistakes and just because I've done some things doesn't mean that God stops loving me. Doesn't mean that I lose my usefulness uh, for what God can do. So I want you to know that it doesn't matter what you've done, no matter how bad you might feel, uh, the Bible says that if we would just repent and that, tell God that we're sorry, that God would bring us back into relationship with him and God will be able to use us. And in fact, oftentimes it is what we've gone through that enable God to use us better so we can help somebody else to not make many of the same mistakes that we have made. So won't you come out to Live in Waters, join us, gather with a group of people, not that don't have a past, but that in spite of their past are allowing God to use them and take them to the next level. Living Waters meets every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. We share the main sanctuary of the Collingdale First Church of the Nazarene, 212 McDade Boulevard, Collingdale, Pennsylvania. Check us out online at www.livingwaterspa.org. Come to Living Waters and let the wave overtake you. Well, the topic was about sex, but now I just had a peanut chew, which is just as good as sex. And I would like another peanut chew. The lady that got him is leaving. But look forward to seeing y'all again. And that's about it. I thought the topics today were great. I wish we would have had a little more time to discuss some things such as single by choice. You know, I just recently got out of a relationship because I decided I needed to be celibate. And I, I think that's an issue that more and more people need to talk about. Sex sometimes is the problem and not the solution. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Single on a Saturday Night. I'm Dayton Tober. This is Shelly Williams. We've been talking about the role that sex plays in uh, marriages and in the whole dating process and relationships as a whole. And you can't talk about sex, you can't talk about relationships without talking about the health aspect of it. So we're joined right now by David A. Miller of Damn Good Bodies. And we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about what it is that you do. How you doing, Deedon? How you doing, everybody? Um, what I do, I, uh, I try to help people look better, look better and feel better, uh, both physically, um, emotionally, uh, you know, people think that just working out is, is just about the physical, and it, it really is, is about the mental as well. Um, you know, a lot of people don't feel good about their self um, when they don't feel good about their body. So I help people look better, and, and once uh, most of my clients, once they start looking better, uh, you, you talk to them, and, and mentally they're feeling better as well. So um, as far as relationships are concerned, you know, I, I don't think anyone is, is naive enough to, to believe that, 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 that the physical part of it uh, is, is, is not uh, important to let a me, lot of people. Let me ask you a question. From a health standpoint, you heard me throw out some statistics as far as the abortion rate in the black community, mm -hmm. the HIV uh, among black women out here. What, what role, I mean, what can be done to just significantly reduce those numbers? Well, uh, just being, just from a, from a health standpoint, I mean, obesity in our, in our community is, is, is very high uh, from, from both adults and, and children. So um, some, some of the rates are as high as 75% uh, for, for African-American women. So um, having yourself better, better in, a, in a physical standpoint is going to help you in, in, in with, with, with diabetes, with, with high blood pressure, with, with, uh, uh, with heart self disease, as with well. self-esteem. So when you feel better about yourself physically, um, you know, you, you were saying not giving yourself so, so quickly. You're feeling better about yourself uh, physically and emotionally. You're, you're not going to be, be prone to do that.
Right, and, and that's one of the things I do on a private uh, basis. I counsel a lot of women. One of the common factors that I hear is that uh, because of self-esteem issues, insecurity issues, that's why you see the excessive amounts of cleavage them accentuating their assets, um, you know, because they don't feel good about themselves. And I, I totally uh, support what you're doing from a health standpoint, because when you look good, you feel good, and you'll treat your body better. So uh, I appreciate everybody for being here this evening. Uh, Can I ask him a true or false ahead, question quick, real fast? True or false? Health-wise, like taking care of your exercise and make sex better, right? No question about it. Oh, yeah. I got to get my weight up. Oh, more okay. true or false? All right, true or false? That's absolutely true. Let me, all right, well, look, this, look, guys, we're going to get ready to wrap it up. This is single on a Saturday night. Shelly, did you want to have any uh, parting, parting words for uh, what are your views on sex? Anything you want to leave the people with? Don't do it. No, I totally agree. Don't do it. Sex before marriage is no good. It always leads to... Uh, the end of a relationship, never the uh, beginning of a marriage, so definitely not. As far as health-wise, I am really, really trying to get that whole thing right. So my goal at the end of all this is to get married. So I want to get my, my mind right, my body right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what, what, you, what you have to offer, like some health tips, because I really, I'm really trying to do it from, from top to bottom, spiritual, for real. I'm trying to get it all together so that I can be a whole, complete person when God sends me my mate. Because he is. He's on the way. I already know it. That's a done deal. But that's, that's and you heard it doing. here. Uh -huh. The uh, health exercise makes the whoopee better. <laughs> okay, it does. I'm going to get it together, okay? Whoopee. Yeah. Oh, I ain't an angel now. Hold on, hold on. I ain't an angel. <laughs> they gonna be born again, that, That's actually a good point. If I could just close this out talking about that, I, I've heard a lot of people. I do. I do a lot of surveys, a lot of uh, studies, and um, what I've I've heard is that many women feel as though they would not marry a man where their sex is not is not good. Any any thoughts on that? I mean, that that whole perception. Yeah. Well, if, if you if you really want to ask me that, um, pers personally, um, I need to know. <laughs> Test drive. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I've, I've been married, um, and I, I, I couldn't sign up for bad sex. So, <laughs> I, Amen, I, brother. Yeah, and, and that's, I, I feel you want it. As a married man, it just, and I would just encourage everybody not to preach to y'all. Really just read what the Bible says on fornication. It's, it's not, we have about one minute left, about 30 seconds left. It, it, sex is not the best way to, uh, you know, to go into a relationship. And, uh. You know, I think everyone here will agree that they've made some mistakes and felt, uh, seen the truth in that statement. So we're going to get ready to wrap it up. Uh, we have about 30 seconds left. I know you had a quick just, question, 10 seconds. Just one last comment about sex in a relationship. Uh, and I apologize if you don't like this analogy, but what I say is sex is like a bathroom on a house. You wouldn't buy a house without one, but you can't live in the bathroom. You need the total package. Absolutely. Absolutely. On that Absolutely. note, Whoopee. on that note, guys, this is single on a Saturday night. I thank everybody for being here. Make sure you tune in next week where we've got some more hot topics and more spirited debates. Single on a Saturday night, guys. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, hello. My name is Nikki Phelps. And first of all, I would like to start off by saying that I am a poly, which no one uh, dare to talk about here. But if you don't know what a poly is, look up polynormous. We'll talk about it later. First of all, I am the daughter of a pastor. I tried to wait for sex and I did everything the right way, quote unquote, the way that I was raised. Wait till I get married to have sex. I was totally not happy, unsatisfied, and um, needless to say that I got divorced. Um, when I wake up and found out who I was and decided to do it my way, um, I dated a man. Yes, I had sex with a man and I lived with a man. I fell in love with this man. I married this man and we have been together for 21 years. So if that man is yours, it doesn't matter if you have sex with him on day one or day 21. He is yours. Sex has nothing to do with it. Know your worth, know what you want, and go find him. Hi, I'm Tamara Wiggins, and I think to, uh, to reiterate what was just said, uh, it, it goes back to us being an individual and your individualism and what it is that you will stand for mm -hmm. and what you will not stand for. And the whole thing in a nutshell, I think um, Mr. Daydam was missing the whole point of what was said earlier is that we uh, respect comes from within, not yes. from what you see on the outside. Thank yes. You. Oh, and also, um, thank you for having me here today, and thank you for my peanut chews. These are my favorite. We can go get our peanut chew on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>